Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the second segment of Huda tonight. I'm your host, Junaid Da, and today we're going to talk about the holy month of Ramadan. This month is full of mercy, is full of rahmah, is full of generosity and giving. The Prophet وسلم, and his companions would be eager to wait for this month. They would want to join this month and benefit from its numerous benefits to the point where there would be a famous dua that would be read. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. They would make this dua on numerous occasions so that they could meet Ramadan. So that they could meet Ramadan and be prepared for its beautiful blessings and benefits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Quran that this month is a month full of reward. This month is for those who prepare. So the question is here, are we prepared for this month? The question here is, are we ready to meet this month in the way that we should meet it? For example, if you have an exam, would you not prepare for this exam? Would you not wake up early? Would you not revise? Would you not put in the effort so that you can be successful in this exam? So the more preparation you do, you will find that the result will be better. So now we have the month of Ramadan in front of us. We have less than two months. Are we prepared? Are we going to seek the rewards that we put into it? So today's program will be broken down into a number of different segments. We'll have a look at first the importance of Ramadan. We'll have a look also at this word taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions this word taqwa and connects it with Ramadan. So what's the significance of taqwa and its connection with Ramadan and fasting? We'll also have a look at different types of people who fast. There are those who fast and their fast is just for thirst and just for hunger. But there are those who fast from their heart and their spirits are revived, their iman is strengthened and their hearts change. So we have the two types, we'll discuss that. And then also towards the end, we'll have a look at different ways in which we can prepare ourselves for Ramadan. How we can be from amongst those that enter Ramadan in one manner and leave Ramadan completely different. So let's have a look at a short report and then join me and my special guest for the evening in just a few moments. How many people we know who were here last Ramadan? And therefore we need to prepare for this month. It is quoted that many of the Salaf would actually prepare six months for the month of Ramadan. Because they would say that if Ramadan goes well, the entire year goes well. Now, what is the purpose of the month of Ramadan? Sometimes we don't think about the purpose of the month of Ramadan. For instance, what is the purpose of man? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We have created man and jinn to worship him. What is our communal obligation? Have you ever thought what our communal obligation is? As an ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَعْمَرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوبِ وَتَنْحَمُنَا لِلْمُنْكَرِ You are the best of people taken out for the benefit of humanity. You enjoy good and you will be evil. Now what is the purpose of the month of Ramadan? Is the purpose of the month of Ramadan to Abstain from eating and drinking only. Well, if we look into the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires something else. We, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that fasting has been prescribed upon you, like it was prescribed upon those who came before you. Why? That you attain taqwa. Abstaining from eating, drinking, a relationship with the partner is a catalyst in attaining taqwa. Now, how many Ramadans have me and you fasted? And we have never attained taqwa by the end of the month of Ramadan. What is taqwa? Taqwa is that by the time that you finish Ramadan, you are very careful. You trod very carefully upon the thorny path of life. That is the purpose of the month of Ramadan. That we, be, by the end of the month of Ramadan, we become people of taqwa. And therefore, whilst we fast, whilst we abstain from eating and drinking, we 
also abstain from all those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made haram. What often happens that we abstain from eating, drinking, relationship with a partner, but we carry on like we normally do. We backbite, we slander, we don't pray our salah. And hence, by the end of the month of Ramadan, we never attain the And also, this is subhanAllah, a month of maghfirah. The Prophet wasallam said that if the month of Ramadan comes, the person who attains the month of Ramadan, and he does not attain maghfirah and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is removed from the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Removed from the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, but this is a month where if you look at the narrations, you know, subhanAllah, it's as though Allah wants to forgive again and again and again a person fast, iman and wa ihtisaman. The Prophet sallallahu said, all his sins are forgiven. A person who stands in salah at night, in tarabi salah, the Prophet sallallahu said, iman and wa ihtisaman, seeking you know, with belief and seeking reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all his sins. In a beautiful narration, the Prophet sallallahu spoke about maghfirah and tawbah. Tawbah is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What a nice report. How many months have we fasted and yet we're still the same. How many years of Ramadan have we experienced and yet our character hasn't developed? How many days of fasting have we gone through and yet our tongues and our bodies are still the same? This year, let's make it a special year. This year, let's be from amongst the best of Muslims and let's take these advices that we'll find today and implement them and make this Ramadan one that changes us forever. So, this topic of Ramadan. With us today in the studio, we have our respected Sheikh, uh, Brother Kareem Abu Zaid. Sheikh, uh, welcome to the show. Jazakallah khairan, Brother Junaid. I'm okay. delighted to be with you. Jazakallah khairan. So, uh, let's begin uh, talking about this topic. There's so much to discuss about Ramadan. We could uh, be here for a very long time. So, let's begin by looking at the importance of Ramadan. Why is it this month has been singled out for ibadah and for worship and the reward is multiple? إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Brother Junaid, dear, dear viewers, we, we we live in, in, in the West, uh, you, you live in England and amongst Christian community and I happen to live also amongst uh, Christian community, right. the majority. And uh, the always, um, they strike you with that question, what is the concept of salvation in your religion? Right. Um, it seems like from their literature, even so we differ on the details, that uh, we're all sinners. We we sin. We fall into sins okay. as human beings. And uh, Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in a good chained hadith, chain of narration, um, he said, Hadith Anas fi Sunan, that Kulubni Adam right. All the children of Adam are sinners. Um, so salvation for them, they came up with that comfortable formula that somebody else did it for them, mm. without going there. Somebody died on the cross to right. save them from the sins. What is our concept of salvation? Okay. Ramadan is just one means mm. to gain salvation. It touches me the, the dua that our righteous predecessors used to make. Um, I read in the books that uh, after each Ramadan, they would make dua that Allah would accept their worship during Ramadan for six months and the other <laughs> five or six months, oh Allah, prolong my life so that I witness mm. Ramadan, I observe Ramadan. Right. Why? Um, the report stressed, uh, uh, pointed out why. You have three chances. 
mm. in this month. Look at this. Uh, and, and this is b b all and in Bukhari wa Muslim, authentic. Man sama Ramadana iman and wahtisab and wufira lahuma taqaddama min zambi. Okay. I think the viewers know what this means, but we'll translate it. Whosoever observes fasting of the month of Ramadan with the two restrictions, imanan, okay. ihtisaban, right. that he is believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reference to sincerity and in reference to adherence as well. And he's seeking the reward. He's not doing it to lose weight or something. No, he's, mm -hmm. he's, w he's w wanting the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his previous sins. Okay. That's one. Two. مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Okay. Whosoever observes qiyam, which is tarawih, right. the nightly prayer right. after Isha, between Isha until Fajr. Okay. Whoever observes this also, إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا, he will also get his sins forgiven. Right. Look at number three, which is one night hidden in the last ten nights of the month. مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Subhanallah. Whosoever observes one night hidden in the last ten nights of the month, a lot of Muslims, unfortunately, they, uh, they settled uh, that it is the 27th. It's possible. There is a high possibility that it is the 27th. But for you really to coincide with Laylatul Qadr, you need to uh, observe ibadah throughout the last ten nights of the month. Therefore, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established uh, the sunnah of i'tikaf, secluding right. himself in the masjid the last ten nights of the month. And in the hadith, in order to coincide with Laylatul Qadr, to get Laylatul Qadr. It's, it's, uh, so just, it's important here to note that, like you mentioned in the beginning, the Christians put their salvation upon somebody else. Right. But we as Muslims, our Beautiful. salvation depends on ourselves. Beautiful. Yeah, so if we don't wake up and do something, we have no salvation. Absolutely. It's upon us. Absolutely. You yeah. got it. And, and that's where really I, I wanted to, uh, your salvation is in your hands. Right. You know, you have a merciful, forgiving God. Ilah. Mm -hmm. Allah. La ilaha illahu. He calls upon us. Qul ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله أو محمد tell my servants who transgressed done everything they messed up their lives dare you despair from the mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى just come back to Allah but this is how you do it this is how you come back to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we have the hadith أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه عند مسلم look at this not only رمضان but look at this الصلوات قال صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم says الصلوات الخمس والجمعة إلى الجمعة ورمضان إلى رمضان كفارة لما بينهن إذا اجتنبت الكبائر from صلاة to the next صلاة جمعة to the next جمعة from رمضان to رمضان so just by you living until the next رمضان you get your sins forgiven but there is a restriction here that you avoid the major sins and it's this like is something it's like this month is surrounded by mercy right right Allah's mercy is surrounding this month and anything you do with the sincere intention will take you towards the mercy uh, Ramadan is is an, uh, an ultimate gift from a merciful God right. to us uh, not not only this Junaid L look at this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets the stage for you mm. Ch you know Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mm -hmm. mentioned that uh, when uh, Ramadan is here what happened to the shayateen the, the satans, the devils. They're chained up. They are chained up. Look, look Allah helps you. I, I want to help you. I, wanna, I want you to come back to me. SubhanAllah. I want to, but you have to do it. You can't just, uh, uh, you, you can't just sit and, and say it's, it's going to be done for you like other people. And it's very unfortunate. That uh, sort of, 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 of thinking uh, is developing. Uh, that, oh, Allah is forgiving. Allah is merciful. Right. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, use these um, uh, means. Uh, here is the, 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 the stage is set for you. Uh, also in Ramadan, somehow the spiritual uh, environment is out there. The masajid is filled with people. Um, people are always talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this right. month. Uh, so it's out there. Uh, and, and this is why... This is why, and um, I, I, I hate to do this at the very beginning of the show, the trustworthy of the heavens, Jibreel alayhi salam, Amin al sama the one whom, the angel, the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trusted to bring the revelation to the messengers, and the trustworthy of uh, the revelation in earth, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, made dua against that person. Ah. Which one? 
فيمس حديث في سنن الترمذي حديث ابي هريره رضي الله عنه okay. وان الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم went to to on his pulpit and he said امين 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 three times then he faced his companions and they questioned uh, امين why are you saying امين او مسنجر في الله الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said that جبريل came to me and made those three dua mm. three supplications three invocations and i said امين after him one of them a loser رغم انف امرئ خاب وخسر in another word may he lose من ادرك رمضان ولم يغفر له someone that Allah subhanahu whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prolongs his life to live through Ramadan and he does not gain forgiveness that means his agenda is not forgiveness I think uh, Sheikh this is an important point that we stop and just highlight because unfortunately in our lives especially those who are born Muslims they don't really appreciate the blessing or the virtue of Ramadan and we go through our lives and we just fast and we just fast and we just fast and we don't contemplate. And there is a real fear that we could fall into this, uh, this category of people that don't benefit. They just go in and go out and don't take any benefit. Fi Sahih ibn Hudan, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hinted to that. He, he pointed out to those people. He said, Hadith fi Sahih ibn Hudan, it's authentic. Rubba sa'imin laysa lahu min siyamihi illa al-ju'u wal atash wa rubba qa'imin ليس له من قيامه إلا التعب والسفر أو السهر. It may be some of you would be fasting, refraining from eating and drinking, and all what they doing really is making themselves hungry and making themselves thirsty. Right. And it may be some of you are praying قيام every night and all what they are doing staying up late and uh, causing themselves tiresome or, or be getting them themselves tired. Okay. But they have not gotten the essence of fasting. Mm. There, is a, there is an essence. The, uh, this ibadah, uh, Junaid, uh, especially fasting, you need to, 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 to pay attention to this. Allah, the hadith of Abi Hurairah, uh, hadith Abi Hurairah and the Bukhari and Muslim, different wording, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hadith Qudsi, kullu amal ibn Adam lah, right. illa sawm fahuwa li. Mm -hmm. The only act of worship, Allah said, uh, about it which uh, is exclusive to him it's exclusive to him all the deeds of the son of Adam the wording of Imam Muslim uh, uh, kind of explains that right. that when we do something when we do an act of worship normally it's mul multiplied uh, hasana into 10 and it can go up to 700 based on the quality of your sincerity okay. and it can go more than that but uh, the scholars they say the angels they write down this person is fasting Mm. They don't write how much hasana you get. Karim Abu Zaid is fasting okay. in your book. Junaid okay. is fasting. Mustafa is fasting. Ahmed is fasting. Right. That's okay. all. Well. Then the reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on. It's like, you know, uh, whenever we want to uh, use an example like this with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to always throw that uh, restriction there. To Allah belongs the utmost example. Uh, uh, in, in, in the heavens and the earth. Okay. Um, if, when there is a generous person out there and you're working for him, do you, do you, do you tell him how much wage I'll get? You know you're going to get a good you wage. You know you'll <laughs> get a good wage. You don't even ask. Right. You don't ask. And, and that's, that's so special. That's so special about mm -hmm. uh, Ramadan. And, uh, you know, I, I can't wait. Y you know, it's, 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 it's a very special season. And, and every Muslim should look forward to that. You right. should you should you should be excited uh, because that's really what what we should rejoice. Uh, I think also, Sheikh, it's uh, built upon the points you just mentioned. I think it's important to possibly highlight to some Muslims who always complain to say, "I'm a sinful Muslim. I I do bad deeds. I lie. I cheat. So I'm not going to pray or I'm not going to fast. There's no point. I'm a bad Muslim." We need to highlight here to show to them that the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is so vast that any person, no matter how many sins he has, has the opportunity to become a completely different person in this month. Anyone who says this, Junaid, uh, seriously, and, and I say this with respect, and I love all my uh, brothers and sisters, dear viewers, we love you all for the sake of Allah. But if you say this, you're really disregarding the quality, the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ mm. My mercy encompasses everyone. Uh, Junaid, there is somebody, uh, and, and please don't, don't misunderstand me, dear viewers, who killed 100 people. Okay. 
and yet he still made it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you to go and kill people now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they, 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 they uh, we, maybe we need to go into the hadith, and, but uh, you know, ju just to, to show you the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There, there is a woman who used to work as a prostitute, right? as a profession. She still made it to Jannah. SubhanAllah. How, how dare you despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you see these examples in uh, our authentic sunnah? When you hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you, Ana al -ghafoor al -rahim. I am the forgiving, I am the merciful. Um, uh, when you hear that call, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said about it, Arja ayah fi kitab Allah. The verse which gives the most hope in the book of Allah, my servant. Right. Allah is still calling you my servant. If you transgressed, if you done it all, despair not from my mercy. Subhanallah. Inna That should be enough. Allah forgives all sins. That should have been enough. Jamia. <laughs> هذا تأكيد في اللغة in Arabic this is a way to, to confirm to emphasis, assure right. to emphasis right. to throw emphasis not only this إنه إنه look at this هو emphasis on top of emphasis <laughs> on top of emphasis <laughs> not only this مش غفور الرحيم oh. الغفور الرحيم okay what, what else do you want Subhanallah. there is something wrong mm. there is something wrong with you uh, 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 despairing from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a quality, I wouldn't describe it to be a quality, but is an attribute of someone who ignores, uh, I'm sorry, who lacks the knowledge of the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. You need to know who you worship. You, you know, in the States, uh, some people will say to the Muslims that uh, your Lord is not merciful. Oh. The Lord is just uh, tuck, tuck, he just wants to make uh, cutting the hands and cutting this and yeah. just formal praise. But when you read verses like this and you look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put emphasis upon his mercy, you find that subhanAllah Allah is the most merciful. Uh, I, I was debating with a Christian priest mm. and he got me on that area. Right. You know what I told him? Okay, let's use something mutual between us and you. Adam ate from the tree. Okay. What do you believe? Adam repented. Did Allah accept his repentance? He no. They, they don't believe that. Allah, no, Allah did not. Allah did not accept Adam repentance. Right. Because that would destroy the doctrine of the original sin. Right. The fact that every newborn is born with the sin which he inherited from Adam. Right. In our religion, in Islam, we believe that Adam, alayhi salam, repented. As a matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him the words. Adamu min rabbihi kalimatin Allah taught Adam the words with which he needs to ask for forgiveness. Subhanallah. Rabbana ظلمna, qala rabbana ظلمna anfusana. Oh Allah, we wronged ourselves. If you do not forgive us and have mercy on us, we'll be amongst the losers. So we condone the uh, doctrine of forgiveness and mercy from the get-go, from the start. We are the leaders of forgiveness. We are the leaders of forgiveness. <laughs> you know what he said? He, you got me. He said, you got me. I said, no, that's, that's incorrect. What you're talking about here is Sharia matters. Mm. Uh, 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 laws. Uh, laws. And... and and, and this has, you know, the, that's where the, the misconception about Islam in the West, uh, that, um, you know, stuff like that cannot just be done randomly. Um, uh, it has to be done in a court of law. Uh, people must be aware of the law. I mean, uh, that's not our and subject. Uh, it's not a, and just to add to that, uh, also the concept, the law itself, the, the, the punishment prescribed in Islam, are no different than those prescribed in the Old Testament. It's not something which is it's, it's exactly the we're, same. We're just throwing it back to the front. <laughs> uh, we call it, this is a mosaic law. Right, exactly. Islam, Islam. This is in the Torah. That's right. We, we, we prescribe, we decreed upon them there that 
uh, you know, the law of quality once it comes to uh, punishment and, and, and so forth is there. And other punishments, stoning to death. If they read the story of, of Jesus with Mary Magdalene when they wanted to stone her to death, why did they give uh, Maryam a hard time when she came back with uh, Isa السلام, in the cradle? And why did Prophet Isa spoke to save his mother from... Uh, uh, we, 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 uh, we, we'll just put it back to the front. Okay. You know. Now, uh, Sheikh, we've d we discussed the importance of, of Ramadan and we looked at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I want to look at another very important point here and that's the point of taqwa. Because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions to us in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun. So we hear that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us here that all oh, you who believe fasting has been ordained or prescribed upon you like it was of the previous nations, like we just discussed the mosaic laws. <laughs> Why? So that you may attain taqwa. This word is, this word is difficult to translate into English. Right. Could you explain to us what is meant by taqwa? Well, uh, I always like to, to throw the, the, the foundation for that, uh, for the whole thing. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we, we hear a lot of people ask in this question, why were we created? Okay. Why did Allah create us? Why did Allah make, make, made me? Of course, we shouldn't be questioning Allah because that's not something that we should do. Right. The question should be really, what is the wisdom? What is the purpose of our life? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered this in a verse at the end of Surah al dhariyat which all the viewers memorize. Okay. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created uh, mankind and jinn kind, but to worship me. So really, the purpose for our creation is, is, is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to submit to him. Now, there is another question that a lot of people do not ask, and they should ask. What is the purpose of worship? Okay. Why do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do we gain if we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The answer in the first call made in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عُبُدُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Okay, so the same word. O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and those before you so that you may gain taqwa. Like you said, taqwa is a concept. It's not a word that you translate. Taqwa, ihsan, iman, aqeedah, you cannot give it an equivalent in English. Okay. You can't. Because they are concepts. You really have to explain the concept. <laughs> you can't just say taqwa. And that is why a lot of the brothers who use, uh, who read the, uh, the English translation uh, or the meanings in English, uh, that's uh, the, the right way to, to, to phrase that, uh, they, they normally find that, uh, that scholar or that translator use it, fear, fear Allah. In other words, have consciousness of Allah. That's right. Different words, and, and, and they get confused. Among, you, you need to understand it's a concept. So, the purpose of our worship is to gain taqwa. Right. Look, look, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about us offering qurbani, sacrifice, right. what did he say? Look, لَنْ يَنَالَ اللَّهَ Allah is the object, not the subject here. لَنْ يَنَالَ اللَّهَ لُحُومُهَا ولا دماؤها ولكن يناله التقوى منكم mm. when you slaughter a sheep Allah is not going to get the meat Allah doesn't eat subhanahu wa ta'ala ta'ala Allah right. Allah above that Allah doesn't need to eat doesn't need. Allah is not going to get the blood of it the skin of it no but Allah will get from you the taqwa okay. the taqwa that uh, you know you you glorifying you're magnifying the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling his commands. وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ When you glorify, and, and, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, when you pay attention, when you give attention, when, when, when you go and buy the, the best sheep, out there and you check it out and you check the skin make sure it's <laughs> healthy and when you bring it you feed it and right. oh, I'm gonna sacrifice I'm gonna offer this as a qurbani to my Lord I love my Lord this is this is uh, this is what taqwa is right that that you try hard to implement the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best ability you have
So, so could we say then, just for, for our viewers who don't understand Arabic, it just in a broad sense that the word taqwa is somewhere in between fear, God consciousness, and uh, also we mentioned uh, the love of Allah and obedience. Here is we should, how we should do it, just to give, but I hope the viewers are going to give us five minutes. Don't be distracted now if you really want to understand the, the word taqwa. Taqwa linguistically. Okay. Th let's, let's deal with the word linguistically. Where the word linguistically derives from. It derives from that you're protecting yourself from something. Mm. Taqwa, linguistically, in the language, in the Arabic language, it derives from that you're protecting yourself from something. So it's like, a, we could give the example like a shield. In, in shield. In time of war, uh, Very good. Okay. That is why sometimes you hear, nar. Okay. Don't you read that sometimes in of the course. Quran? Fear what? Or the shield fire. yourself from what? From the fire. From the fire. Tay. Linguistically, that you're supposed to protect yourself from something. Tay, we have different ways to explain it, taqwa. And, and we're going to use... Um, uh, different statements. Let's use Abu Huraira. Right. Abu Huraira, one day he was asked, Ya Abu Huraira. And uh, Ubay ibn Ka'ab also or Umar. Yani that author uh, was narrated after one of, uh, after the three of them. Right. Ma taqwa What is the taqwa, Abu Huraira? What is the taqwa? I hope the viewers know what the taqwa is now. It's an Arabic word, it's a concept that we're trying to explain. Then Abu Huraira asked the questioner this question. هل مشيت على طريق فيه شوك? Okay. Have you ever walked on a thorny path road? So Shaykh, just to pause, we actually have a phone call. Okay. Uh, <laughs> brother Muhammad from Egypt. Yes, brother. Brother Muhammad. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah, brother. I'm good. Yourself? Alhamdulillah. Okay, would you like to present your question, please? Uh, I, want to ask, I want to ask uh, a question for you. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I want to uh, know how can I learn uh, English uh, to uh, invite uh, to Allah uh, with this language? Okay. I'll present the question okay. to the Sheikh. The question is out of topic, so we don't want to spend too much time on it, but uh, he's asking, he needs to learn English so he can invite people uh, to uh, Al-Islam. He is Egyptian. He needs to go to school. All right. English is a language is to be learned. You know, going to school, um, practice. Probably can answer the question better than me or an English speaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe uh, d uh, just as a suggestion, if he's fluent in his own mother tongue, maybe he could invite uh, fellow Arabs in his tongues, which will make his right. that work very easier. Uh, I think there is something that uh, anybody who is uh, who wants to explore that they need to understand that the vocabularies uh, in the religious arena of of uh, of. Uh, of English is different to the vocabularies that are used in, in, in so you really have to begin reading literature in English right translate it um, from Arabic to English in, in uh, religious literature okay so that you you begin um, uh, developing as much uh, or as many uh, words uh, as possible uh, okay. Yeah, we'll let's uh, uh, brother Muhammad, uh, if you have any further questions about learning English for, for the sake of da'wah and so on and so forth, send us an email to our uh, email address and inshallah we can give you a better, uh, more comprehensive answer, should I say, and inshallah get you started with learning English so you can call people to the way of Allah. Uh, coming back to our point, we were discussing taqwa. Abu Huraira was asked, what is taqwa? Abu Huraira asked the questioner, have you ever walked on a thorny road? Right. A road of thorns. The questioner answered yes. Then he asked him, what did you do? I'm going to use the Arabic answer, the Arabic, way, the Arabic word that he answered, or how he answered in Arabic. Right. You can tell that there is... Mm, there is a correlation between the yes. words. I protected myself from the thorns. Okay. So, so that is what taqwa is, that you stay away from the sins. Mm. 
that you protect yourself, you shield yourself from the sins, because the sins will bring you the wrath and the anger of Allah. Right. This connects us with, the, with what we said is that taqwa is a shield. Shield. Is a protection. Yes, yes. It, it's linguistically it's a sound too. Right. Uh, and, and one of the, um, uh, the poet, um, his name is Ibn al-Mu'taz, uh, used this actually to, uh, to come up with a beautiful um, lines. He said, خَلِّ الذُّنُوبَ صَغِيرَهَا وَكَبِيرَهَا فَهُوَ التُّقَى وَاصْنَعْ كَمَاشٍ فَوْقَ أَرْضِ الشَّوْكِ يَحْذَرُ مَا يَرَى I will translate this. <laughs> وَلَا تُحَقِّرَنَّ صَغِيرَةً فَإِنَّ الْجِبَالَ مِنَ الْحَصَى Okay, this needs a long translation. No, no, very quickly. Leave off okay. sins, right. minor or major. This is taqwa. Okay. And do like someone who is walking on a thorny road. He protecting himself from the thorns. And don't you ever belittle sins because mountains are made of small pieces. Subhanallah. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. He, he's really taking this from Abi Hurairah. The best, uh, let's, let's take Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Taqwa. أن يذكر الله فلا ينسى okay. that you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always and never forget him وأن يطاع فلا يعصى أن يؤبي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never disobey him mm. وأن يشكر فلا يكفر and you're always grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you stay away from being ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but, but here is the one that is beautiful and right. the scholars actually consider this this is the best explanation for the word taqwa. Okay. Talq ibn Habib, what did he say? أن تعمل بطاعة الله that you act in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala على نور من الله you don't make up your own obedience sincerity and adherence okay. that you must take from the guidance ترجو ثواب الله you're hoping that Allah will reward you for that. Okay. رجاء وأن تترك here is the second half of it وأن تترك معصية الله that you abandon the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again على نور من الله according to the guidance you do right. not make up your own this, you don't say this is a sin no it has to be stressed out that this is a sin in the revelation تخاف, تخاف عقاب الله and you're doing this because you want uh, because you're afraid of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so basically taqwa is that you engage in obedience, mm. that you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That and that's where Ramadan comes in. Ramadan comes in to train you every year to do this. You find yourself in Ramadan, you know, waking up for sahur, and then you go to pray fajr, and then in the morning you have to go to work, and then you, you have to keep up with the salah, and then you're fasting throughout the day, and then you try to, to pray maghrib in, in the masjid, and then isha in the masjid, and then tahajjud, and then suhoor. Always, always you're doing all this. You're always engaged in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you charge yourself and you, and you make yourself accustomed, uh, 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 familiar with the, or, or you, you, you reach a base where you're comfortable with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what taqwa is, really, that you, you work hard to, to do that. It's almost like uh, in, in, in the West, in the States and in the UK, if you have a vehicle, if you have a car, you have to take it on an annual service. You have right. to take it to the garage and you have to get right. everything checked. The wheels, the engine, the screen, every small bit of the car has to be checked and then you're given the certificate, hey, you, you can use this car for another year. It's similar to this I kind of... <laughs> you, know, you know what it is? You know what it is? Uh, this is how I look at it. You know we have three enemies. Okay who are in our path to sub sub submission, who, who, who are trying to stop you from submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. The first and foremost is you, mm. your nafs. Okay. Shaitan, that is two, and your bad friends. Okay. The friends who invite you to do haram. The friends who do not want you to do goodness. Okay. The friends who discourage you um, you know, to obey Allah and, and they want you to be in the world side of things. So these are the three enemies you have. Right. Shaitan is chained. If you really have a good agenda, you shouldn't be around these bad friends during Ramadan. If, mm. you, if you're going to spend every night in the masjid, you're going to be around... Good friends. So the only enemy left for you really is you. 
is your nafs. Okay. Now, our nafs, when we neglect purifying it, it turns into a line. Okay. You know, ideally, let me just, you know, when you're used to work out every day, how easy this is? Just stand up, get in the mood, get, get your gears on, and just you run a couple of miles, a couple of laps, done. Okay. But try this. Try to stop working out for two weeks. How difficult it is to go back. Right. How difficult it is to go back. Impossible. You know, I, I sometimes I do a treadmill, <laughs> you know, at home. <laughs> and I, if I stop for a week or two, forget it. It becomes very difficult to go back. Very difficult. Mm. Likewise, your nafs throughout the year, your nafs. Oh, let's pray at home. Don't worry about the masjid, you know. Le oh, let me do that. And your nafs already becoming dominant, mm. dictating. Now Ramadan comes. My nafs, come on. Everybody in the masjid, come on. So you try what? Taking your nafs back purifying the nafs, getting back on track. And that is why it's a pity if you come out of the month without getting your nafs back tuned in. You right. know, like the tune, the, like the tune in that you mentioned. <laughs> the service. Like the service that you mentioned. <laughs> yeah. if, uh, you waste it. You waste the, the opportunity. Shaitan is chained. The bad friends, normally they don't hang around you. So you should be in the masjid hanging around the right people. So the only thing that is left for you to fight with is your nafs. And sure, yeah. is, it, is it fair to say, if, uh, using the analysis that you made of uh, taking your nafs back because you've gone so far, that maybe there are a group of people, mashallah, that they are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when the month of Ramadan comes, because they are preparing for the month of Ramadan many months before, like you mentioned, six right. months before, right. they are preparing themselves. So when the month comes, they don't actually go back, but they actually move forward. True. So some of us, because of our sins, the lying and the cheating and all the things we've been doing throughout the year, we have to go back. <laughs> but there are some amongst us that don't go back. They true. actually go forward. That is very true. Um, if you read the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, Aisha says, Rasul ﷺ used to fast almost the majority of the month of Sha'ban. Right. Not all of it. He never completed a month except Ramadan. We mm. know that. But almost the majority of Why? Why? To train oneself. Something that we notice, I, I, you know, I, that's pr possibly going to be my first Ramadan here in, in, in Egypt, but uh, I normally spent all my Ramadan um, uh, overseas. Okay. But something that we notice in the West, in particular, uh, I don't know about the rest of the world, that the first week, Normally, the masajid is packed. I that's don't know if it's the same in England. or That's or correct. But then gradually, you know, the number of, of people observing Salat al-Tarawih is the masajid is filled. And then gradually what? The numbers go down. Goes down until the night of the 27th. And then it comes up again. They come back up. <laughs> <laughs> Ramadan is done. Okay. This is that style that you don't want to be off. Mm. These brothers, these sisters, did not prepare for Ramadan. It's like if you wanna, you know, uh, if you wanna play a soccer game or a football game, right? You, you know, in the states we have football and soccer both. So uh, I know in, in Britain this is different. Right. What do you do? Don't you need to prepare your muscles? Don't you need to work out? Make sure that you're not gonna have a cramp or exactly with Ramadan, you need to prepare your body. Get your body used to praying tahajjud at night. Right. So one thing that you need to do, get your body ready from now. Try waking up at least two rakahs. At least two rakahs and in which? Okay. So three, you end up with three. If you're not used to this, make it five, ideally, seven, ideally, nine, ideally, 13 and stop. 13, uh, 11, I'm sorry, and stop. That's good. So uh, two, try to observe a couple of days out of the month, the three days, the three white days, you know, the right. 13th, the 14th, the 15th of Rajab, right. and the 13th, 14th, 15th of, 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 of Sha'ban. What about a couple of Mondays, a couple of Thursdays? Especially this year, I, I don't know if the viewers are aware of this or not, a lot of the, the people already are saying this is the longest Ramadan. That's correct. This Ramadan is going to be the longest Ramadan. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the day-wise, uh, number of hours. The day is going to be the observed. longest, right. The, yeah, the longest uh, 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 amount of hours. Uh, this month, you need to train yourself. Don't wait until the first day of the month and then and, and, uh, you're going to. So get yourself already used to 
Mm. So this way you got your body ready. Uh, stop, you know, stop backbiting, gossiping already, because uh, you're not supposed to do that. You know, already train your tongue. Now get your heart ready. And okay. this is another mission, getting the heart ready. This leads us on to our next point. Yes. Uh, I want to look at now, th there's a very important point about fasting and the heart which is fasting. Some people are fasting, like you mentioned earlier, is just a physical thing. It's just no food, no water, starving, hunger, and nothing else. But there are those who fast, and it's their heart that is fasting, and it's their heart that is changing. Can we discuss these two types of believers? Um, I want to I want to take this from the concept of al ihsan. Okay. You see, uh, when Jibril alayhi salam came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Hadith Jibril, the, the famous Hadith al mashur right. What is the Islam? What is the Iman? Right. What is the Ihsan? The scholars they say these are three levels in the religion. Okay. Islam is the entry level. Okay. He's a Muslim. Beginner's level. Beginner's level. Okay. Uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, al-hadith al-Bukhari, one day he was distributing the booty of Hur after the battle of Hunayn, I believe. Okay. Fasa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu was standing next to him. Faqala lah, he said to him, A'atayta fulanan wa lam tu'ati fulanan wa huwa mu'min. Mm. You give him that person and you did not give one and he's a believer. He said, Aw Muslim, he's a Muslim. The Bedouins in Surah Al Hujarat, Qalatil Arabu Amanna. The Bedouins came to the Messenger of Allah saying, We're believers. We're believers. We believe. Okay. Allah said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell them that, Qulam tu aminu. You're not believers yet. Walakin qulu aslamna. Okay. But say we're Muslims. Look at this. Walamma. Mm. يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Okay. And when faith penetrates your hearts, then you can, you, can, you can do that. You can say that. So the Prophet ﷺ made a clear distinction between yes. Iman and Islam. Yes. Mm. Muslim, Mu'min. Right. Mu'min is someone where, uh, you know, he is believing in the unseen. Okay. Believing in Allah, angels, books, messengers, day of resurrection, and Qadr. Okay. That you believe in that. But there is the third level, which is وَمَا الْإِحْسَانِ What is the إِحْسَانِ? قَالَ He said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ SubhanAllah. In another wording of this hadith, أَن تَخْشَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ That you deal as if you're seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, you cannot see Allah in this dunya. But uh, this is in a way that Allah... فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ The least that you need to attain, that you need to realize that if you do not see Allah, Allah sees you all the time. Right. That is, that's where fasting and the heart is. Mm. الـ 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 that's the ihsan. Um, something, I, I, I said there is a Muslim and there is a believer and there is a, a muhsin. Something about fasting, Junaid. Okay. Even the Muslim, during the month of Ramadan, reaches the level of Ihsan. Okay. Uh, I still remember these days myself as a kid, you know, as a young man uh, in Egypt. Um, when it was so hot, so thirsty. And I used to work in the farm. Mm. You know, I, I, by, I, I'm already revealing myself to the viewers, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so... I used to be alone in the, in the field, uh -huh. and I would see these nice running streams in front of me. I'm thirsty, man. Mm. You know, working sh somehow when I started fasting, it started also in the summer like this. Okay. So long days, I'm working under the heat of the sun, and here's and the running stream. You can see the water. And guess what? Uh -huh. No one is around you. I never taken a drink. I, I don't know. Likewise, you'll find a lot of Muslims by themselves inside the house. The refrigerator is there. No one is there. No one is there. Mm. 
He probably going to open the refrigerator and he's going to look at the mango juice, the, the orange juice, <laughs> the milk, and it's cold and nice, but he will never take a drink. It's funny, isn't it, uh, Sheikh, how... Uh, uh, it's funny how uh, during the other months of Ramadan, the refrigerator is usually empty. Right. But during the month uh, of Ramadan... Yes, <laughs> yes. That's for, uh, the point that I'm trying to make here is right. the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is where the heart is. Of course. That your heart is always engaged okay. in remembrance. Okay. Is always... Well, uh, you see... أُرْقُبْ نَفْسَكَ عِنْدَ ثَلَاثِ be mindful of yourself okay. in three occasions. This is where you want to be during the month. إِذَا عَمِلْتَ عَمَلًا فَذْكُرْ نَظَرَ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكَ Right. When you do an act, remember Allah is looking at you. وَإِذَا قُلْتَ قَوْلًا فَرْقُبْ سَمْعَ اللَّهِ مِنْكَ And if you say something, remember Allah hears it. And if you're silent, وَإِذَا صَمَتْ فَذْكُرْ عِلْمَ اللَّهِ فِيكَ When you're silent, when you're having these inner thoughts, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ فَاحْذَرُوهُ Yes. So be mindful, be watchful what you're thinking about. SubhanAllah. That is where the heart is. That even when you're silent, even when you're silent, you're concerned about what you're thinking about. Ideally, you know, you're fasting, okay, and you're in the U.S. It happens with with uh, with us, uh, or or in England, and and these are non-Muslims environment, and uh, especially now the summer, women normally take it easy on on their you know the dresses and and so forth. And you're walking down the street, your eyes land on a on a figure, okay. Uh, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna entertain it here, the thought, or are you gonna turn away, and say I'm fasting? This is haram. This is where the heart is. This is mm -hmm. where the muraqaba is. Um, you know, l l l I read that beautiful story in um, Muslim Imam Ahmed. Okay. Um, Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhuma. Normally, he used to uh, take his mawla nafa' to the desert and, and do some nomading, you know, like a nomad life. Uh, uh, he saw a shepherd coming down from the mountain. Uh, Ibn Umar was very famous of, um, of freeing slaves from slavery. Okay. It was mentioned that he freed almost a thousand slaves from slavery. And he would normally test them uh, before, if, the, if he knows that they are, they are uh, so those who pray and those who are really religious, they take priority in his list. Okay. Fa this shepherd is coming down and he asks him, uh, you know, uh, who, uh, to whom belong these um, uh, this uh, uh, this flock of sheep. He said to my master, uh, I believe uh, he he named somebody. He said, Tell me one, sh uh, sell me one sheep of them. Mm -hmm. He said they don't belong to me. I'm I'm only a slave and I'm taking care of these sheep. He said, sell it to me and tell your master that the wolf ate it. Mm. You know the, what the slave said to Ibn Umar, Wa ayna Allah. SubhanAllah. Where is Allah? <laughs> I can do this, yes. It's easy. He's conscious. Yeah. Probably my master is going to believe me. It, it happened before. Wolf, wolves do eat sheep. But where is Allah? Allah. Where is Allah? That is what you want. That's the heart fasting. Uh, Sheikh, we're coming towards the end of the program. We've got about roughly a minute to go. Uh, inshallah, I would like to invite you again for our next episode so we can continue this discussion on Ramadan and we can look into ways and how we can prepare ourselves for Ramadan. You mentioned the first one uh, during the discussion about beginning to fast and start to begin to pray during the night. So these are, I think, the key. Uh, these are the key. Uh, could you possibly, in these last 30 seconds or so, give some advice to us on how we can begin our preparation? Just some general advice about Ramadan. Like I said, um, begin some physical rituals. Right. Salah, refrain. The heart really needs to be prepared. Okay. The hearts need to be cleansed, cleaned. Um, some of the people was asked, what should I do? Okay. Should I recite the Quran 
or should I ask for forgiveness? Hmm. You know how he answered? A filthy garment needs water more than musk, more okay. than perfume. <laughs> we all sinners, right. Junaid. We're all. I'm the first one. We're all sinners. Okay. These sins are on that heart. You need to clean it. Okay. You need to prepare it. Okay, Sheikh. Unfortunately, we have come yes. to the end of this episode. Uh, golden advice. I'd like to thank you for coming to the program. And inshallah, in next week, same time, same place, if you give us permission, we would like to continue our discussion inshallah. and talk about ways and how we can prepare ourselves. Uh, so thank you very much for coming. Jazakallah khair. Dear viewers, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. You heard lots of things about Ramadan, the benefits of Ramadan. We talked about taqwa, how we can rectify ourselves. And the two bits of advice that we can take away from this program, number one, is to begin to fast. Like the Prophet ﷺ would prepare himself and fast, we should begin also. Secondly, is to wake up in the night and to pray just two, two rak'ah and with witr, like the Sheikh mentioned, and we can begin preparing for the Qiyam. Those who prepare today will benefit from the fruits tomorrow. So join me and join the Sheikh. The same time, same place, next week inshallah. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.